It is a name that conjures up ferocity and defines the word predator. Saber tooth. A huge cat which specialized in killing the very biggest prey. Immensely powerful, sporting seven inch long knife sharp canines. For nearly two million years, this monstrous beast dominated the primal landscape of the Americas. Sabretooth's power and weaponry were overwhelming, but suddenly, mysteriously, it became extinct. Now, science and state-of-the-art computer technology will take us back 100 centuries and bring this formidable creature back to life. We'll go on the hunt to measure the power of the cat's massive teeth and explore why this killing machine faded into extinction. The African lion one of the Earth's deadly predators. Up to nine feet long and weighing in at 400 pounds, it rules the savannas and richly deserves its name, King of the Beasts. But as intimidating as it is, the lion pales beside its prehistoric relative, Smilodon fatalis, the saber-tooth cat. Massively built, Smilodon may have weighed up to 750 pounds, 25% more than the biggest male lion, and it carried some serious weaponry. 14,000 years ago, just as human hunters began colonizing North America, this carnivore roamed the continent, but the environment was in a state of flux. Although a 1,000-foot thick sheet of ice still covered the far north, much of the rest of America was a lush landscape. It teemed with bizarre mega-beasts, mighty mammoths, giant ground sloths, and ancient bison, all engaged in a constant battle for survival, pitted against some of the most lethal killers ever to walk the earth. The 11-foot-tall, short-faced bear the largest bear that ever lived. The savage dire wolf, the big dog of the era, which could run down even bigger prey in packs of 30 or more. And the massive American lion. But the most deadly hunter of all was Smilodon. Imagine two steak knives attached to a massively muscular beast. With the hunting skills to use them, the saber tooth was engineered to kill. This fierce cat could conquer any prey, even a mammoth. Saber tooth was the most dangerous carnivore of its time, probably the only beast that could face down the giant, scavenging, short faced bear. Sabretooth ruled the Americas. Then, about 10,000 years ago, they suddenly went extinct. Today, the only thing left of these extraordinary creatures are their bones and emblematic teeth. But our best source of information comes from an unexpected location. In a place called the Miracle Mile, deep in the heart of Los Angeles, there lies a fossil gold mine. Just off one of downtown's busiest streets, scientists are constantly unearthing America's prehistoric wildlife. The La Brea Tar Pits are a collection of toxic-looking lakes and pools. Here, tar, or asphalt, seeps to the surface, creating one of the best places in the world to find the bones of saber-tooth and other prehistoric predators. 
14,000 years ago, though the climate was cooler, the vegetation and terrain of Southern California were very similar to today. The tar pits were hidden in the landscape, making them one of the most deadly animal traps ever known. In the summer, molten asphalt oozing up from thousands of feet below ground would form intensely sticky pools. These were covered by leaves and other debris. Any hapless creature wandering into the area would become stuck fast as if to a giant piece of flypaper. If the victim was a prey animal, predators like Sabertooth were attracted to what looked like an easy meal. Soon, they too become mired in the tar. Ultimately, both hunter and hunted would die, sinking into the asphalt to be preserved forever. Since excavations began at La Brea about a hundred years ago, over a million bones have been recovered, including thousands belonging to Smilodon, representing one of the world's biggest collections of saber-tooth bones. Asphalt is not only a deadly trap, it is also an excellent preservative. The bones it disgorges are in much the same condition as if the animals had died just a few years ago. This is part of the hip bone of a saber-toothed cat. And if we go down here, you can see the knee joint. And in this corner over here, there's a beautiful skull of a saber-toothed cat there. And if you look closely, you can see the eye socket of another saber-tooth sticking out of the wall right here. These fossils are an amazing record from which scientists are trying to build a forensic profile of these monster cats. The picture that emerges is that of a strange creature, a ferocious cat that in many ways was not a cat. Though related to modern felines, the saber tooth was not like any cat known today. And there was nothing cuddly about Smilodon fatalis. The name means deadly knife tooth, but the precise purpose of these finely serrated fangs is still a mystery. Although many of their bones have been found in California, Smilodon roamed freely through both North and South America. Other Ice Age carnivores, such as the short-faced bear and dire wolf, are closely related to modern bears and wolves, but no real descendants or relatives of the saber-toothed cats survive today. Smilodon is often compared to a modern lion. It was roughly the same size, but it had a very different build. Imagine a lion on steroids. This is a hugely powerful animal. It is muscular beyond Arnie Schwarzenegger's wildest dreams. Smilodon was about the size of a lion, but wouldn't have looked like one. The body proportions and probably the gait and a lot of the behavior would be more similar to a black bear than it would be to a lion. It's got massive uh, arms and forearms, a massive chest, relatively sort of short, stout back legs. Um, it's got massive grappling hooks on its thumbs. The muscles of the neck were also much bigger than a modern cat's, implying that Smilodon had a savage bite. The whole package is purpose-built to grapple with, you know, close and personal with big, dangerous animals and pull them down. Scientists can calculate Smilodon's build from the fossils but it's much harder to know what Smilodon's skin and fur would have looked like. Based on modern cats, their coats could have had various markings designed to give them the best possible hunting camouflage for their environment. And it seems unlikely that they lived up to their nickname of saber-toothed tigers and had stripes. If these animals had any kind of pattern on their fur, it probably was more like spots. The stripes just don't necessarily fit into the type of habitat that we had here at Rancho La Brea. A quick glance at the saber-toothed skeleton also reveals some other telltale clues as to how Smilodon lived. 
Its short bobtail means it was not much of a runner. Modern cats, even big ones like lions, use their long tails for balance and turning during high-speed pursuit. The smart one just didn't have that capability because of the shortness of its tail. This animal obviously was doing something completely different from modern feline cats. If Smilodon wasn't chasing fast-running prey, then it had to have been targeting slower, bigger animals. They would have had to use stealth to get close, and then launch a short-range deadly attack. And the bones bear that out. Sabretooth had oversized front paws with big thumb claws, which scientists believe were for the specific purpose of grappling with extra-large prey. It was a wrestler, not a runner. It was an ambush predator with really short legs and somewhat flat feet. And it was designed to get a hold of its prey, grapple with it, and actually hold it immobile while it was stabbing it. And this was very important. Its whole anatomy is designed to do this. During the Pleistocene, North America was teeming with large herbivores which provided a massive food supply to any hungry prehistoric predator. Smilodon may have evolved to target the biggest of these kinds of animals, with their tactics reflecting the sheer enormity of their prey. Brute force and killing power might not have been enough. A new kind of killing strategy was now required. In Ice Age America, there was plenty of food for a ferocious carnivore like Sabretooth to prey on. Bison, horses, and camels roamed the landscape. And even giant ground sloths and mammoths were potentially on the menu. But unless Sabretooth cats hunted together, these behemoths were formidable opponents, even for a beast as well-armed as Smilodon. Most modern big cats, such as tigers, are solitary and hunt alone. Only lions, which live in prides, hunt collaboratively to take down very big animals. There's no way to prove whether Sabretooth also hunted in a pack. But there are clues to be found in the collection of bones at the La Brea Tar Pits. The fossil remains of 2,500 individual saber-toothed cats have been excavated there. Normally, there are way more herbivores than the animals that eat them. But at La Brea, predators outnumber prey by almost 10 to 1, precisely the opposite of what you'd expect. And often, the skeletons of several saber-toothed cats are found mingled in with the bones of a single large herbivore. Some scientists believe this is evidence that they were social animals. They envisage a group of Smilodon going after the easy meal of a trapped bison, and then themselves becoming stuck in the tar pits. It's possible that saber-toothed cats lived in social groups or prides, much like modern lions do. A lion pride is a feline sisterhood it typically consists of four to 20 females living with two or three males. The females do most of the hunting, often in groups. By hunting together, they can go after bigger game. And bigger game means more food. Another potential advantage to group living is that any member of the pride that's injured and too weak to hunt for itself can feed off the kills made by the rest of the group. And among the saber-toothed remains at La Brea, paleontologist Chris Shaw sees evidence that saber-toothed cats were able to survive terrible injuries, injuries that would have stopped them from hunting. What we have here is the right side of the pelvis of a saber-toothed cat. This animal is considered by us to be a normally developed individual bone. On the other hand, this bone was from a cat that had a severe dislocated hip not only was it dislocated, but the muscle mass around it was ripped and became horribly infected. This animal survived for months, if not years, with this condition. 
He thinks that injuries like this would have been fatal for an animal living on its own. The fact that these bones healed means it had been supported in a group of saber-toothed cats. Shaw believes that several animals worked together and may have even nurtured injured group members, allowing them to feed at group kills and protecting them from other predators. Whether or not you could call it a pack per se or a pride is probably questionable. I would prefer to just call it a social group of some kind. But for others, the idea of saber-toothed cats helping to feed and take care of an injured member of a social group is pretty far-fetched. The fact of the matter is more likely that they might eat the injured member. I don't think there would be any advantage for Smilodon to live in a pride or to be very social. In fact, social interaction is extremely rare in carnivores in general. It's mostly something that dogs or dog-like animals do. It's not a cat thing. But there's no reason to assume that Sabretooth behaved like modern cats. They might have hunted and lived like modern wolves. In a wolf pack, roughly the same number of males and females live together with very little physical difference between them. Maybe Smilodon actually had a social structure that was more akin to wolves with monogamous pairs lasting a long time. In lions, the sexes are very different. Males are much bigger and have larger canine teeth than the females, and they have manes. But the differences have nothing to do with hunting. It's mostly the females that do the food gathering. Male lions are bigger and better armed because they are designed to fight to protect the pride and conquer other prides. But in Sabretooth, both sexes were the same size, and both had the same murderous teeth. So that doesn't sound like lions, because if we have a pride situation, males should be going out and fighting males to take over prides. And if they're doing that, there's a big advantage to them being large and bigger teeth and more weaponry. And that's not what we see in Smilodon. Finding the same giant canines in both sexes also rules out the idea that they were some kind of male ornament designed to attract females, the big cat equivalent of a stag's antlers. It's hard to believe that these supersized canines were anything other than what they looked like, specialized killing tools. And it appears that nature likes this particular feature. Smilodon fatalis was one of several species of saber-toothed predators that once dominated the planet. I think one of the main things that people don't understand is that this was the dominant type of big cat animal on the globe up until very recently. Even though no modern big cats have saber teeth, in the ancient mammals they've evolved and disappeared at least four times. Paleontologist Paul Matthews believes these extra-long teeth evolved in order to allow the cat to puncture the thick skin of large herbivores. Matthews has been testing DNA from Homotherium, the scimitar-toothed cat, a cousin of Smilodon, found in Beringia, the area of the Alaskan and Canadian Yukon through which humans first came to the Americas over 12,000 years ago and he discovered that Homotherium was eating practically nothing but mammoth. I think we're starting to get enough evidence to say that the saber-tooth morphology that has evolved a number of times in history is all about going after thick-skinned prey. With canine teeth that were twice as long as Homotherium's and a more muscular body, perhaps Smilodon was designed not just to target young mammoths, but the adults as well. And whether Sabretooth hunted alone or in groups, it seems it was designed to take on all the big prey animals living at the time. It was specialized toward killing big animals, animals bigger than itself. It's arguably the most specialized mammal that's ever evolved with respect to that kind of big game hunting specialist. Like modern big cats, Sabretooth was a hyper carnivore. The only thing it was interested in eating was fresh meat, and lots of it. 
Amazingly, we don't have to speculate what the saber-tooth ate. The Smilodons of La Brea make it possible to find out very accurately what was on their menu. The bones are so well preserved by the tar that many of the proteins that were present when the animals died are still embedded. And in those proteins is the evidence of what saber-tooth cats preyed on. At the University of California at Santa Cruz, Cana Fox Dobbs uses the science of stable isotopic analysis to study the diets of prehistoric animals. We're able to tell um, differences in diet based on if they were preferring one herbivore type over another. The test showed that saber-toothed cats in the Rancho La Brea area mostly ate the more common herbivores such as horses and bison but also some of the real behemoths, such as ground sloths and mammoths. A prehistoric bison weighing in at nearly a ton was certainly a mighty opponent. But modern lions don't need super long canine teeth to kill big prey like cape buffalo and zebra. So the question remains, why did saber-toothed cats have such big teeth? To try to answer that question, and to try to understand precisely how saber-toothed cats used their fangs, Dr. Stephen Rowe from the University of New South Wales in Australia built a virtual saber-tooth, a digital biting machine that simulates the stresses and strains on a saber-toothed skull. He CT scanned a Smilodon skull, which was later digitally rebuilt even down to subtle differences in bone density and tooth structure. Simulated muscles were attached in all the correct places, allowing them to simulate more accurately than ever before the precise biting action and power of a saber-toothed cat. From these models, we can then digitally crash test these animals. We can run them through different behaviors, basically putting limits on how they could have behaved and what they were best adapted to do. Rowe and his team then did the same thing for a modern lion, recreating a perfect facsimile of the king of the beasts. Then they put digital saber tooth and digital lion through a bite off. It was widely thought that saber tooth with its massively muscled body would have a very powerful bite at least as strong as a lion of comparable size. But the bite-off produced a surprise winner. In a nutshell, our, our results um, are showing and telling us that Smilodon actually bit like a bit of a pussycat. For a guy or gal of his size, the bite was weak. Around about half as powerful as a lion of the same size. To double check, the team gave the digital saber tooth the same bite power as the modern lion. Now when we did that, bang, Smilodon's jaw blew up. It is not built to handle those kinds of bite forces. You can see particular points are not just coming close to failure point, they're exceeding it. And that weak jaw seriously constrains the way in which Smilodon actually could have killed things. It turns out that Smilodon, which weighed more than a lion, only had the bite strength of a large dog. In living carnivores, there's a strong link between bite strength and the size of the animal that a predator can kill. The stronger the bite, the bigger the meal. But if the saber tooth was such a pussycat, how could it kill such giant prey? Ever since the first perfectly preserved saber tooth remains were excavated from the La Brea tar pits in Los Angeles in 1875, scientists have been trying to figure out exactly how Smilodon used their supersized canines. In spite of a weak bite, we know they were eating big animals like bison, even mammoths and sloths. So presumably, Smilodon's knife-like teeth were a special adaptation 
for killing their mega prey. But African lions can also take down big prey, and their canines are not nearly as long. So Smilodon's teeth must have had a deadly design advantage, and they must have used a very different killing technique to that of modern cats. Compared to saber-tooths, modern big cats have shorter but sturdier conical-shaped canine teeth, which they use to seize prey and grapple them to the ground. Big cats, such as lions, kill small prey by essentially biting through the back. But with larger prey, their teeth usually don't penetrate the skin. Instead, they either suffocate or choke their victims, clamping their teeth around the carotid artery, causing the prey to lose consciousness within seconds. The modern lion's much more massive skull, with its powerful jaw, is clearly designed to deliver a very different kind of killing bite than saber tooths. The African lion has these canine teeth that are relatively round in cross section. They're really peg like by uh, comparison with these knives that are coming out of the front of the jaws of this animal. So the sabers are extremely long, they're very narrow from side to side, they're fairly broad from front to back. But these knives clearly had some limitations. Sabretooth's canines were sharp, dangerous weapons, not in any way designed for the kind of violent struggling kills that lions engage in. The sabers were strong in the forward-backward direction, but relatively weak and brittle when subjected to side-to-side -side motion. And that weakness means there were some real limits to where Sabretooth could bite its victims. If it got its canines caught up in the bones of struggling prey, Smilodon was likely to lose a tooth. I don't think an attack along the spine of the prey would have made sense for Smilodon because they had those enormous sabers, they're very delicate, and risk of breakage is high for those saber teeth if they're impact something hard, especially from the side. So if they leap onto the back of an animal and then sink their teeth in, one of their teeth, at least, is likely to run into a vertebrae and it would snap. A picture is emerging of an incredibly specialized hunter. It ate very big prey, but had a relatively weak bite, with jaws and teeth too delicate to use to drag its prey down for fear of breaking them. So, by a process of elimination, it seems the key to the saber-tooth's attack was to wrestle its prey to the ground before delivering the coup de grace. It had to get that animal down on its butt and effectively immobile. Now, big four-legged animals are tough hombres to mess with when they're up on their full feet. This violent wrestling style of attack is borne out by the large number of Smilodon bones that show evidence of severe injuries in the lower back area. That is indicative of high stresses being placed on that region, which is like when you're trying to lift weights or do something like that, or pull a big weight down, cementing your hindquarters to the ground. You can see how that could really torque the lumbar, the lower back region, and that's where we see a lot of injuries in Smilodon. But this still doesn't explain the real value of Smilodon's enormous teeth. Modern cats may attack by biting, but they kill by suffocating, their teeth clamping down around their prey's throat. It can take between 10 and 15 minutes for an animal the size of a buffalo to choke to death, a long time for a big cat's jaws to remain tightly closed. With teeth like Smilodon's, this technique would have most likely been physically impossible and dangerously slow. Dr. Rowe thinks Smilodon's teeth and skull design were all about making a fast kill. He believes that in a ferocious prehistoric world, with so many other big carnivores around competing for the same prey, time was of the essence. If a saber tooth didn't kill quietly and above all quickly, it would attract the attention of a whole range of other monster predators that would have been trying to steal its prey.
A single saber tooth might have been able to scare a small number of dire wolves off one of their kills, but that situation would be completely reversed if a large pack of wolves attacked a Smilodon on a kill. And there were even more formidable foes, such as the massive American lion, which may have been 50% bigger than even a Smilodon. And then the gargantuan short-faced bear, which stood 11 feet on its back legs, the biggest and most threatening carnivore in the land. This monster seems to have been a specialized thief that earned its keep by intimidating other predators into giving up their kills. The short-faced bear was so big that even if it was facing off against several saber-toothed cats on a kill, the outcome was in little doubt. The saber-toothed cats went hungry. Smilodon, formidable as it was, was not the biggest kid on the block. So to, to be able to kill that big animal quickly has a whole range of potential advantages. And, and to my mind at least, that is what Smilodon was all about. This law of the jungle was not kill or be killed. It was kill as fast as possible. But how was this death bite delivered? It is time for a prehistoric anatomy lesson. 10,000 years ago in North America, the competition for fresh meat was fierce. The saber-toothed cat's deadly teeth were designed to make lightning-fast kills on the big prey it specialized in hunting. Smilodon had to be able to precisely target its saber teeth to where they would do the most lethal damage with the power to deliver the blow. And it had to be right on target, as there are few second chances in the wild. Smilodon had a hugely powerful neck. Weak jaw, but a very powerful neck. And the, those neck muscles were used to arc those teeth into the prey and cause massive damage, which kills the prey quickly. The saber tooth was able to pull the skull downwards at the same time. So it was actually lifting the lower jaw and pulling the skull downwards, driving it through the prey at the same time. So this indicates that this animal had an extra sort of adaptation for biting that we don't see in cats today. The question remains, how and as importantly where did Smilodon sink its fangs into its victims? There are two theories, slashing their throats or a disemboweling bite into the guts of the prey. William Ackerston, curator of vertebrae paleontology at the Idaho Museum of Natural History, believes that Smilodon would go for the belly. Sabretooth can't stab its prey with its canines because the cat's lower jaw gets in the way, hitting the victim first and causing the sabers to glance off. So Ackerston's belly bite theory suggests they use their sabers to make what he calls a shear bite, a long wound down the abdomen of the prey. The lower jaw would be pressed into the prey animal and then the skull would be lowered, rotated around to the lower jaw. When that happened, this being a flat blade here, would make a slice. And then as the jaw closed farther, this actually geometrically moves backward into this region of the jaw and elongate the slice. But other saber-tooth experts think there's no way that Smilodon would or even could attack the belly of a large animal like a bison. When I was growing up, I worked as a cowboy on a big ranch. And the one thing you learned about working with cattle is you don't work around their rear end. You always try to control the head. With its relatively delicate jaw and teeth, Smilodon would have risked grievous injury going for a low blow to the belly. Even if it managed to get in for the kill, the thrashing legs of the prey would still be very dangerous. And there's another problem. Even with those twin blades, Smilodon couldn't hurt what it couldn't bite. The problem with the stomach bite is that the stomach has too big a diameter to fit inside the mouth. Despite this long tooth, a Smilodon cannot make a very deep bite. The reason for that is the lower jaw gets in the way. So the animal might get a bunch of skin. It may flay whatever it's trying to kill a little bit, but it's not going to be able to kill it because it simply cannot bite it. 
no modern cat would attack the stomach of their prey. They almost always go for a killing bite around the throat. And many scientists believe the only logical way for Sabretooth to kill was to go for the throat as well. The neck is more accessible and less well defended than the belly of any big prey. And Smilodon's teeth seem perfectly evolved to make an almost instantaneous kill. There's absolutely no doubt that once you've ripped out an animal's major arteries and or windpipe, they're going to die much more quickly than if you just try and strangle them. The neck contains more vital blood vessels. You'll get a quicker and more certain kill biting the neck than you will biting the stomach. Martin believes that the saber teeth were designed for a very specific purpose, to cut the throat of the prey. He thinks that Smilodon's canines worked in an almost identical way to a specialized curved assassin's knife. And the interesting thing about this knife is the real cutting edge is on the inside of the curvature. If you have a curved knife like this and you drive it in and you drive it around the curvature, the curvature rotates the blade and it cuts itself out while you're stabbing, which is as close to instant death as you're going to have. Professor Frank Mendel is also fascinated by the mystery of how Sabretooth killed its prey. In order to demonstrate and understand how this fatal bite was delivered, Mendel has constructed a biomechanical model of a Smilodon jaw. I'm suggesting that Smilodon simply drove the teeth through the neck, severed the vessels, and then withdrew the teeth. I don't see the need for the extra effort to rip the throat out because I don't think it affects any more lethal damage to the animal. This is laparoscopy versus open surgery. You do as little damage as necessary to get the job done. At this big cat sanctuary in Bridgeport, Texas, a saber tooth will bite again. The Center for Animal Research and Education, or CARE, is a safe haven for abused and abandoned big cats and a resource to the scientific community. It's here Mendel can find prey for his metal predator. It's designed to be able to accurately simulate the biting action of any carnivore. The teeth are based on this specimen from La Brea. Exactly the same detail, the same fit, same sizes, all the rest. Of the carcasses already earmarked to be fed to the big cats at care, Mendel is going to use a cow to approximate the size and proportions of one of the Smilodon's favorite delicacies, bison. Most of the animals used at care have expired of natural causes. In other cases, the animals are in critical health and are euthanized. We're gonna go. The first experiment will be to try to simulate the so-called belly bite. The test begins. Good. The test team makes several attempts to bite into the abdomen with the articulator. But no matter what angle they use, they cannot bite very deeply. It just pushes it right off the blade. The lower jaw prevents the canines from gaining an angle that will allow a deep bite. I'm fully closed, and I got a mouthful of skin and nothing to really puncture the skin with other than those lower incisors. A Smilodon saber teeth were no accident of nature. They look that way for a lethal reason. But weapons cannot work without tactics, and the Smilodon's killing techniques are still a mystery. But now, Professor Mendel's mechanical test suggests that a saber tooth could barely penetrate the belly of a stationary animal, let alone savage any vital organs. Okay, down. The next target is the neck. The team expects the mechanical Smilodon will have no problem biting here. Good. Hold it. But there is one critical question. How much bite pressure is needed for the teeth to slice all the way through? Computer models show the saber tooth couldn't actually bite very hard. 
Will mechanical tests bear this out? Even with a motionless prey, it is not that easy. But after several tries, Mendel's machine finally penetrates the neck of the cow carcass. Oh, it popped, it popped through. What we've seen here is that both teeth penetrated deeply into the neck. The next question would be, did it catch anything fatal? Did it catch anything lethal, rather, like one of the major vessels? By measuring the bite strength of this model, the team also discovered that precision, not power, was Smilodon's secret weapon. They did not have to bite very hard to punch through the skin, severing vital blood vessels. Between 200 and 300 pounds is what it usually takes to penetrate the, the skin of the animals. Considering that some humans can actually generate 300 pounds of bite pressure, I think the average cat could, could do this fairly easily. Once the teeth are engaged, those vessels can be sawed by those serrated edges on front or back. Mendel says that if the teeth cut through both jugular veins, the prey would pass out and bleed to death in a few but long minutes. But if they cut through the carotid arteries, the animal will die almost instantly. So, once it had them down on the ground, Smilodon could easily penetrate the necks of even the thickest skinned animals. The biomechanical test strongly suggests that it was almost impossible for saber-toothed cats to inflict a fatal bite on the abdomen of the bigger animals they could catch. But to those who favor the belly bite theory, Professor Mendel's test is by no means conclusive. But even if the neck bite was only one potential tactic of a versatile predator, this experiment does confirm that Smilodon's knife-like canines were uniquely suited for killing, with a fast bite to the neck of its prey. It may have had different approaches for different size animals, and it may have depended on the actual situation at the time. But basically, it is going to be using those claws to get that big guy on the ground and exert force onto the front end, onto the animal's head and neck. The test also shows that these specialized teeth also had limitations. It is this specialization that may have led to the demise of the saber-toothed cats. For nearly two million years, Smilodon, with its seven-inch-long throat-cutting canines, was one of the dominant predators in North America. Whether the bite was delivered to the neck, the belly, or any other part of a prey's anatomy, the saber tooth was a killing machine. But about 10,000 years ago, Smilodon fatalis disappeared from the prehistoric landscape. Its extinction is a mystery. But around the same time as the saber tooth disappeared, other apex predators arrived on the scene. And they arrived on two feet. Early hunters most likely made their way across the land bridge between Russia and Alaska. And some have speculated that it was they who killed off the saber tooth. But there is no evidence that humans actively hunted the saber tooth. In fact, there's no evidence of any interactions between humans and Smilodon. It seems more likely that they gave this fearsome predator a wide berth. These two species probably avoided each other. I'm sure humans would find uh, a saber-toothed cat quite threatening. But early humans had one thing in common with the Smilodon. They coveted the same meat. And there was only so much of that meat to go around. Although the then small human population could not have eaten all of the game, they could have begun and hurried along inexorable extinction events, which took the Smilodon along for the fatal ride. The end of the last ice age was a lean time for the predators that specialized in big prey. It wasn't just the saber tooth that disappeared. Great packs of dire wolves were wiped out at the same time. And the last to go was the giant short-faced bear. A recent theory suggests a comet might have triggered a mass extinction event in North America. No one can say for certain. But the climate did warm and became much drier. 
the world changed from one that was largely forest to an open landscape of grassy prairies. The denizens of these grasslands, the mammoths, the ground sloths, began to die off. Less prey meant fewer and fewer predators. The only animal big enough to be worthwhile for a saber-toothed cat, or for that matter, for a lion, was the American bison. But the American bison changed from a woodland bison to a prairie bison. And prairies are unsatisfactory habitat for even modern cats. So here you had a situation where the only suitable prey was living in an area where you couldn't catch it. And Sabretooth was such a specialized hunter of big animals that it couldn't adapt to smaller prey. A Smilodon couldn't even bite a rabbit because the teeth would get in the way. The most perfectly equipped creature for killing big animals was over-equipped for the new world. It is a uh, beautifully adapted animal for getting large animals onto the ground and then killing them quickly. Frankly, it's not very well designed for anything else. And that may well be at the heart of explaining why Smilodon isn't around anymore. Today, the closest thing to a modern saber tooth is Borneo's clouded leopard, a medium-sized tree-dwelling cat with unusually long canines. This leopard is not a direct descendant of the saber tooth, but this rare creature is living proof that the deadly design of a saber tooth can still be used as a weapon of killing precision. Today's natural world has made this design all but obsolete, but worlds can and will change. The art of killing always strives toward perfection, and given the chance, a saber-toothed cat might well evolve again.